Hello, this is Hal Richardson. This week we're starting a new show, God's Commandments. In this session, we're going to discuss the commands of God. We're going to look at things from the standpoint of the basic to some of the deeper meanings of God's intents. God is good all the time, for he is love, in 1 John 4, 8. And yet, God is king of the universe, and therefore he makes command decisions every day, every minute, every second, throughout. So he must make commands. God commanded space, time, and matter into existence. In Genesis 1.1, says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, space here is the heaven, matter here is the earth, and time here is the beginning. He also commanded the light to come forth. In Genesis 1-3, he said, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. In the Hebrew, it's a little more blunt. God said, Light be. And light was. He commanded the elements that he'd made and he commanded the plants to come and grow and he commanded the fish in the oceans and he commanded the animals to come forth on the earth. But when God decided to make man, he made him with his own hands. And from the first man's rib, God formed woman and put her with the man. Now the word God used in these first verses of the Bible is Elohim, which is a plural form of God, because God is plural not that he's more than one God he's just three persons in one God just like you are three persons in one body your body soul and spirit and God is the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and so God made man in his own image and he made them male and female he called the man Adam and Adam called the woman Eve God placed them in the Garden of Eden which he had planted and he gave them this command in Genesis 2 16 and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden Thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now when God said freely eat, that means that they didn't have to work for their food. It was plentiful and grew abundantly in the garden that God had planted. It was a gift from their Creator. But we all know they fell into disobedience. Eve was deceived by the serpent who was possessed by the devil, and Adam followed her. This brought further implied commands and a promise of hope. 
For the serpent had told Eve that she would not die if she ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yet God had told Adam that he would die. So God promised a coming Messiah that would deliver man from the power of Satan over the world which Adam had given away when he ate the forbidden fruit. In Genesis 3.15 God says, and I will put an enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. Now God was talking to the serpent or to the devil that was in the serpent. Now God had told Adam that he would die if he ate the forbidden fruit. But God is good and merciful. So he killed animals and let their innocent blood atone for Adam and Eve's sin from year to year. And thus the sacrifice was established by God. In Genesis 3.21, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Now this covered their sins with the lives and the blood of the innocent animals, but it covered their bodies as well. For outside the garden, the elements were harsh and it was cold. And the Lord God said in Genesis 3.22, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way to the tree of life. God had revealed himself to Adam and Eve and walked with them in the garden. And he had told them of the eternal gospel written in the stars. You can see my blog on the same of, of the Gospel and the Stars and also on YouTube. The next commands were given to Noah. First was to build the ark and to save his family, his wife and his sons and their wives. The earth had become so corrupt. This was ten generations after Adam and the earth was beyond redemption and God chose to save these eight people to, to save mankind. In Genesis 6, 8, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. After the flood had subsided, then God spoke these commands and promises to Noah. In Genesis 8:20, And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took every clean beast, and out of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So without the law, Noah knew what were the clean animals. Verse 21, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, and neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Verse 22 is a promise of seed time and harvest. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, summer and winter, Day and night shall not cease. Zero. Next was to be fruitful and multiply. Genesis 9 1. 
And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Next was they could eat meat, but no blood. Verse 2 of Genesis 9. And the fear of you and the dread of you will be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that moves on upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Unto your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb I have given you all things. But the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, you shall not eat. The life is in the blood, which is not to be eaten, according to Leviticus 17.11. But God told Noah this beforehand. Murder and capital punishment. And I will, sh I will surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And again, fill the earth, and you be fruitful and multiply, and bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. So you see here, life was precious and wanted. And then God said, No more flood, and gave them their covenant rainbow. And God spake to Noah and his sons with him, saying, and I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl and of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For perpetual generations I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow will be seen in the cloud. You have to understand here that before the flood, there was no rain, only heavy dew every day in Genesis 2, 5. Verse 15, And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy the earth. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh. That is upon the earth. That'll conclude this lesson. Next week we'll continue with those that were before the law, but yet God gave them laws. And uh, I want you to join me then. We'll be studying about Abraham. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I invite you to ask him into your life today. He is the center of the word and the center of all that we're studying. This is Hal Richardson. Join me again next week. Bye.